Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Merle Bland, the candidate's forum moderator for the Wyandotte County primary election 2021. I am with Business West, the lead sponsor of the forum, along with Kansas City, Kansas Community College. The focus of the forum today will be on races for Sheriff of Wyandotte County and the Board of Public Utilities at Large, Position 1 and Position 2. The panelists who will be asking the questions will be Mary Rupert of the Wyandotte Daily Online, Elnora Jefferson, Groundwork Northeast Revitalization Group, and J.D. Rios, a former community college trustee and public school educator. Candidates will have two minutes to make opening remarks. Candidates are reminded this is not a debate, and candidates are urged to stick with the issues. First, we will hear from Mary Girl, who is a candidate for BPU position number one. Mary, you have two minutes. All right, thank you so much, Merle. And uh, thank you to Business West and the KCK Community College for hosting this forum. Uh, it's really great to be here. And um, I just want to start by saying, um, I lived in the Kansas City area for about 13 years um, on both sides of the line. And um, I've, been, um, I've been a volunteer with um, various organizations, including the Libertarian Party of Kansas. And I've also recently done a lot of uh, assistance with um, the homeless in our community. Um, the main reason I'm running is because I'm just really tired of seeing the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And I think a big part of that in KCK is the pilot fee that we deal with and the policies at BPU. We have people getting cut off for having very, very low balances on their utility bills, $5, $1, 50 cents. I've heard all kinds of stories about this. And these are things that simply don't happen with private utilities. And I think that's something that we can address. We can find out how BPU can adopt more of the policies at a private utility, or even better yet, open up KCK to competition in the utility market. I think that would be helpful. Um, as far as the pilot, I think that is something that has to go. I know that that was brought into an existence many, many years ago, back in 2002, in fact, I don't think whatever its original purpose, which is, seems to be a mystery depending on who you talk to, it no longer exists. It's bringing in all kinds of money, millions and millions of dollars that isn't being used for what the people actually want it to be used for in our community. It seems like it's going to finance the, um, the BPU bills for large corporations that get all kinds of deals through the UG. And so I think that that needs to be changed. Um, and with that, I will yield the rest of my time. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we will have opening remarks from Ryan Edson, who is running for position number two to be reelected. Ryan. Uh, thank you, Merle, and thank you uh, to the rest of you uh, for putting this on. Um, my name is Ryan Edson. I was born and raised in Wyandotte County. Um, the only time I left um, for a four-year stint was to go to Kansas State University. Um, after I graduated, I moved back to Wyandotte County and started working at Shatz Distributing as a sales rep. I, I moved up through the company um, and eventually became general manager uh, of Shatz. Shatz was sold in 2014 to a company out of Springfield, Missouri um, called Will Fisher. Um, I've, I've held the general manager position at Will Fisher until this is last November, where I was promoted to uh, VP of operations for our Kansas City, Kansas and our St. Joseph, uh, Missouri operation operation, excuse me. Uh, my wife and I built a house in 2004 out in Piper, um, because, and, and this is where we currently live now full time. And, and we decided we wanted to raise our, our, I, I'm from Piper and, one to raise my family and my kids here in Piper. Um, so I currently have two daughters that are that are in school. One's a sophomore, um, and one is in seventh grade. Um, you know, I I've, I've been on the board for three and a half years now. Um, I I feel that, you know, 
it's the first year and a half, I will say it was a struggle to be on the board. It's just learning the huge learning curve. But over the last two years, I think we've, we've been able to put, go making strides in the right way. Um, you know, just by, you know, demanding accountability from, from everybody at the BPU and transparency. Um, we, we get told a lot that we are not transparent. Um, we, we, all of our meetings are open. You're welcome to come to any meeting that we have with the exception of the executive sessions, which typically is talking about, um, either labor negotiations or, or something that is, individual basis about an employee that is a private matter. So, but other than that, um, that's, that's kind of my opening remarks. And uh, like I said, thanks again for hosting. Thank you. Now we'll move to Dennis Grendel for his opening remarks. Dennis. Thank you for hosting. Thank you for hosting this. Uh, I'm not a politician. I've never run before in my life, but uh, I am a lifelong resident of Wyandotte County. Uh, I went to Wyandotte High School. I went to Kansas City, Kansas Community College. I have a degree in business and public administration from UMKC. Uh, I have three children. Uh, two of my children are deceased. Uh, I was in the National Guard that was called to active duty in 1968. Uh, I spent 41 years working for the Board of Public Utilities as a uh, meter reader, water service inspector, light meter installer, and uh, I retired from there as a uh, revenue protection investigator. Uh, my wife is a retired school teacher. She's taught for 36 years in the Kansas City uh, area schools as a mostly fourth grade. I'm president of Getty Grove Neighborhood Watch Group and uh, I'm running because I'd, I'd like to see our rates reduced wherever I can. Uh, I know they've been there when the uh, United, uh, when the government was merged with the county they left the BPU alone, and there's. I think they could um, take some of those jobs and, and merge them with the city and help reduce uh, the, the budget that way. And uh, I also think that uh, you were talking, uh, people talked about uh, the people getting cut off. Well, the, the, the city is getting money from the federal government stimulus money why they own the bpu why can't they take some of that money and give it to the bpu to help these people pay their bills and 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 get them caught up so they can live again uh and i i'd like to see if we could reduce the rates maybe this would help bring in incentive for small businesses to open up again and uh i want to thank you for your time okay now we'll move to the questions from the panelists, and uh, we will Earl, start with Mary Earl, Ruby. excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we have another candidate that's on. I didn't. I don't see anything on my screen. Is someone yes, else? Da David, David. David Haley. David, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. You don't. Yes. Have, you don't I, not have a. Do you not have a? Okay. I no. didn't realize you were there. Certainly, thank you. I don't know how to put the video on. Uh, I, I and it gotten audio, our second. Audio, audio will work fine, Senator. Well, okay. I prefer to. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> All right. But if there is a way that I can join by um, audio vi visual, uh, audio, like audio, Senator, audio will work fine. Let's let's go ahead and. All right. Go ahead and present your opening remarks. Okay. You have two minutes. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Merle and JD and um, uh, Mary and those that are our conveners today for hosting this, the work that you put together through Randy and through uh, Elnora to help bring this together. I appreciate very much. So I am David Haley. I've been involved um, with the concerns of Wyandotte Countyans as a native Wyandotte Countyan for several decades. And I guess what it comes down to, and I'm asked this quite a bit, is David, why are you running for the BPU? And some have touched upon it. It comes down to two things. One is accountability. 
Um, many people feel that our utility, our jewel of an electric and water utility, which we, the municipal rate payers purportedly own, um, don't have a voice at the table. And, and we really feel that we don't. Our small businesses uh, don't have the accountability from the, uh, and our, our rate payers, our residential just don't. So David Haley's campaign is one of simply this, putting the public uh, at the table for the Board of Public Utilities. I know that sounds uh, like a cliche, but we really feel like we're not. There's disparity now, and many people don't understand, and I'm one of them, why it is that our board does and allows some of the practices to continue without accountability. Finally, I've wanted and pushed at the legislature that we have a certain amount of that accountability, which will increase number two, the second reason, transparency that David Haley is running, um, through the Kansas Corporation Commission. Can we compare apples to apples, though we're not, we're a public utility and those are for profit, but with the Kansas Corporation Commission, some of the policies that are being implemented uh, that just don't make sense, that are out of whack because we are a local utility. Uh, again, I appreciate this. I will remember after I'm elected that I did run for the people first. That's the only draw that brings me to this table. That's the only thing that's in it for David Haley, and I won't forget after being elected. Okay, thank you, Senator. Now we will go to Mary Rupert, and she will ask the first question. Each candidate will respond to the same question. Mary? Thank you. Should a moratorium on shutoffs be extended again for BPU customers who are delinquent on their bills? And if so, for how long? And we'll first ask Senator Haley. I would think um, that during this time, this is unprecedented times. So the brief answer is yes. Um, however, there should be some safeguards with that yes. Uh, again, I'd like to look at what the industry standard is. We know that there are supplemental assistances that should be um, um, applied to those who are having hardships because of our unprecedented downturn in our economy. And we should look at on an individual basis why it's necessary to um, uh, to continue those who have fallen in arrears. So I say, yes, it should be continued. And unfortunately, it's going to take a little more legwork, a little more insight on our staff to analyze the why. But the, um, with the supplemental assistance from CARES, from our federal and from our state, and at our local level, just as we've looked at a moratorium on evictions uh, with our landlord rental, we also too have to look at the other needs that we have by way of electric and water use, that's a, a primary uh, livability issue for our ratepayers. So yes, but with conditions. Dennis Grandel, your response to that question. Well, I believe you're right that there shouldn't be a, there should be a moratorium on it because uh, uh, you know I mean it's, it's hot out there. We can't we can't be cutting people off and. Uh, We've got to find a way to help these people to get to get them caught up so they can they can live their lives normally like everybody else. Uh, I I I I'm be quite honest with you. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I know, like they said, there there's there's uh, the BPU has some programs that you can use to help, but. I don't know if they're running out of money. I know, like I heard that the uh, uh, Salvation Army's out, the uh, uh, Catholic Charities, they're out of money. But uh, like I said earlier, maybe we can get some money from the city. They're supposed to be getting uh, assistance from the federal government. We could use that money to help these people. We got to do something. And uh, I, I really, be quite honest with you, I don't know what the answer is. Okay. Ryan Edson, your response to the question. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I would, I would, uh, I was on the, I, we had the, the board uh, unanimously voted uh, a month ago to extend or to bring back the moratorium. And then we also um, ex, ex, uh, extended it at our last meeting to go through, uh, I believe it's August 3rd. Um, and at, at that time, we'll look and see what financially is going on with the BPU. And then also, um, you know, the kind of the, 
the part of the, the reason for the moratorium that we put back in place was, was because all the issues we've been having at the state level with care, the CARA program um, and to see if the numbers are coming coming back. It was very, very low for Wyandotte County as far as getting people to um, apply or get applications coming through the door. It, um, since our last, uh, our August, or excuse me, our July 1st, the July first meeting in July, the numbers have ramped up quite a bit, uh, but we still want to watch to see how this is going to shake out for the next uh, week or so. And then we will make a decision then. Um, you know, I think the biggest issue that I see with some of the Kira stuff is, I mean, it's, it's great that they're doing the Kira thing and I wish we could get some help at the state level to not make it just for renters. Um, the Kira program is, is strictly for renters and utilities. And if the, if, if the rental, I mean, somebody can come in and ask for help for the uh, utility assistance, but they don't, if, if their renter does not agree to help them with them, then, then they, their application is denied. So I, we need, I mean, there's more issues. I mean, it is unprecedented time. So, but yes, um, th to answer the question for how long, I don't know. We've, we've extended to August 3rd and we'll, we'll see what the numbers look like when we uh, meet again. Mary Girl, your answer to the question. Um, yes, I'm so glad you asked this question because I think the fact that we're doing, the BPU is doing moratoriums right now, this is indicative of a bigger problem that's been a problem for a long, long time. And it's just been by virtue of the fact of our government's response to this pandemic and the lockdowns that have resulted and hurt everybody's lives that we're seeing now that we have to have a need for a moratorium, which is just a short-term solution. Why is it that we have for years and years and years people unable to pay their bills? And I think it goes back to the fact that the policies are not good, that we're having people who are basically current on their bills being cut off. Um, we have people who are losing services. People are ultimately losing their homes because they can't afford to pay their utilities. And so they have to move away and it discourages home ownership. It discourages people coming here to build businesses. I mean, I think, yeah, we can continue to do moratoriums, um, but where does it end? What is, what is the root cause of all of this? I think that's the bigger question that we need to be asking. Um, you know, why is it that the BPU needs to rely on outside private charities? I mean, I thought, if everybody thinks public things are so great, how come they're not solving the problems and we're, we're having to rely on the private services? It seems to me the, the private help and the private services are the solution and not the, not the public solution. The public solution is an inferior solution, in other words. So I think, yes, um, because we don't have another solution at the moment, a moratorium is necessary, but let's, let's keep talking and let's keep pushing and going into the deeper layers of this. Why is this a problem? You know, we're just seeing the the top of the ugly head of this right now. Let's let's go further in and figure out how we can change these policies and make uh, BPU more more welcoming to people in Wyandotte County and in KCK. Okay, thank you. Now we will go to Elnora Jefferson for the next question. Elnora. Okay, thank you very much, Merle like to know um this is a um well i guess there were a couple questions i want to ask this is I have to separate them here here is the, the first question uh we have a representative democracy um in standing for election to the bpu board uh, how will the your election to the board satisfy the will of your constituents and we will start with mary girl mary Did you hear the question? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. That's a, that's an excellent question. Yes, um, we do supposedly live in a representative uh, democracy um, here. My election to the board, I don't know how many other people currently on the board do this, but I will tell you that if I am elected to the board, I will make public my votes on everything that I vote on on the board. I will do whatever I can to um, make sure that you know people are finding out the information that goes on. I know the meetings are public. I think um, to a certain extent, it's difficult for people to 
to get to the meetings or attend the meetings. I know for a long time here in the last year, they, uh, they weren't really very available. But um, I think if people who are elected, like myself, if I'm elected, um, if we make public what's going on there, we can create public interest in it and get more people wanting to pay attention and wanting to listen and feeling like that they do have a voice and feeling like that we will listen to them because we're going to do everything we can to make ourselves accountable. At least that's my plan is to make myself accountable to those who elect me. Okay. <clears throat> Brian Edson, your response, please. Uh, my response is on that question is um, I'm, I'm out in the public um, all the time. Um, seven days a week, you know, living in Wyandotte County, working in Wyandotte County. Anytime we have um, issues or things going on that's a hot topic with BPU, I am talking to people all the time, asking their thoughts. Um, and and kind of what Mary had said, you know, I, I when I vote, I take it as a vote. I talk to all sorts of people and and not not just friends. I have people that come up to me that just know me from being out 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 so much. And I listen, whatever, whatever my constituents are saying, that's the way I'm going to vote on something. So that, that's my response or answer. Okay, very good. Dennis Grendel, your response, please. Okay, well, I uh, going around door to door and I've talked to people and uh, their biggest concern is the high rates. And uh, I've been listening to them and I would do whatever I can to help lower the rates. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there, I, I worked for the BPU for 41 years and I was out in the public all the time, listen to people and I, I listen to what they have to say and I, I'm going to try and do whatever I can to w do what they want me to do. Uh, I don't, I don't know anything else to say. Okay. Very good. Senator Haley, your, your response. And we uh, see your video now, by the way. Yes, and I'm sorry for the video. That's probably, all right. no you would problem. probably prefer I, I um, close it off again. But um, for the time being, could I ask, please, that um, if Elnora uh, Jefferson might repeat the question so that I answer with specificity, if that's okay, Merle? Sure. Go ahead, Elnora. All right. Yes, thank you. Now, let's see, Senator Haley. We have a representative democracy. And so, uh, as you're standing for election to the BPU board, how will your election, what do you pledge to do to satisfy the will of your constituents? Well, I hope, thank you again, uh, Elnora Jefferson, for the question. I hope that there would be a more representative um, government of our six member units. Right now, uh, disparity is created by accident or on in purpose, we, we can't say. We have six members on the board. Three are elected at large uh, or all over the utility, all over the city, and three are in district. As it turns out, um, we have three and a half of those six members come from one part of our county, the western part from Piper. And we have nobody east of, six, east of 635 um, on the board. I say a half because one of the members lives in Turner, just south of Piper. So four out of six um, are not in touch, as far as I'm concerned, with the majority of the ratepayers. Those of us who work and live, who are largely um, average income, who are out of touch with those, uh, or are not in touch with those who are on the Western quadrant, uh, are more prosperous often part of our county, who are the majority of the board. So I hope that when I'm elected, with your help, uh, those that are listening, that we'll have someone who represents people first, not a corner of our, uh, but and who will be responsive uh, to those needs when we hear from them. Let me commend in closing the BPU for now having uh, our meetings online. The BPU meetings are online, a response to COVID. There used to be a couple years ago when I last sought this office and lost by 35 votes in the general, after a vigorous campaign where uh, our campaign was outspent 10 to one uh, by those 35 votes, that now since then, at least anyone can attend the meeting on the first or the third Wednesdays of the month by logging on. You know, I guess 
in a, in a weird way, thank you, COVID, because now we can hear from those who have concerns before the board without them having to take off work or drive over to uh, Minnesota Avenue and sign in and hear the board. So I hope that that will continue in a post-COVID world whenever we reach that point um, and that we are able to continue having online that transparency of the access. But my voice will be the unique voice, or so it sadly appears, uh, that would be on the board that represents over half of the county that's currently not represented on our six member board. Thank you, Senator. Now we'll go to J.D. Rios for the next question, and it will go to Senator Haley. J.D. Thank you, uh, candidates, for your time, and uh, appreciate your candor this afternoon. My question is, uh, in the uh, UG uh, candidates uh, information, there has been calls for audits of the BPU and even consideration of consolidation to be further uh, expanded uh, by including the BPU now uh, with the uh, UG. What are your thoughts on uh, both an audit of the uh, performance of our public utility and the discussion of possible consolidation. Senator, your comments. Well, You're Marcy, muted, thank David. You. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, JD. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you for that, um, that question. So during the course of consolidation in 97, I was uh, privileged to, uh, to move from the primary in 97 to uh, the general for mayor CEO of our county. Uh, the one who also moved forward, who would go on to uh, be victorious was Carol Marinovich. And during the course of time, we had this discussion of county and city consolidation. And the quote for which I was most attributed which uh, led in part to my demise, not being elected mayor CEO, was that I feared, I feared that because we didn't have the foresight to include the utility in consolidation, that we had the county and city, but not our own utility, that the quote would be, the BPU would become a slush fund for the new merged government. That was the term, quote unquote, uh, Mary, you can pull up an old copy of the cans, and I don't know if it was in Wyandotte West, Merle, but the cans imprinted that. And I fear that sadly, without that consolidation or without a review of it, if it's gonna be independent now because we're 23, 24 years into consolidation or more, that maybe we can't go back and unring the bell. But the slush fund, quote unquote, that many of our ratepayers fear and feel is that the mill levy is held harmless for the unified government because all of the taxes are being shifted on a monthly basis on our utility bills. You'll see the line item, not just the dreaded pilot or the water pollution and the taxes for trash collection and what have you, but we should have gone back and looked at this to not have had what has occurred. And that is that our under consolidation by only two factions, the county and the city has left free and unfettered a slush fund for the local government to suggest that our taxes are being held harmless and our mill levy is good, but we're still paying those taxes when we unzip that envelope every month and look at uh, that hor horrible response with those local fees. Okay. I hope that begins to answer the question. Yes. Dennis Grindle, your remark. Okay, well, I, I believe the the BPU should be audited. I'm sure there's things they could find there. I'm 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 not positive, but uh, yeah, I believe it should be audited, and I and I I, I believe that we could uh, consolidate some of the the BPU with the city and uh, save some save some money, like like purchasing uh, HR. Uh, 
uh, when we where we work on their trucks, uh, you know, we could eliminate that out at the Riverview and send it over there on State Avenue with the city and let them let them uh, that should help bring down some of the the expenses with the BPU and um, I guess that's all I got to say. Okay, Ryan Edson, your remark. Um, so as far as the audit goes, I, I have, I have no problem with an audit. Um, we are audited yearly by multiple different agencies, um, whether it's compliance or financial or uh, multiple, multiple things every year. So I, I have zero problem with that. Um, you know, as far as consolidation goes, um, you know, I think about the consolidation, you know, I was quite a bit younger back then, but my mother was actually on the board that um, helped with that whole consolidation. And, you know, there was a lot of promises made um, that, you know, that if, if they consolidated the county with the city that, you know, things would get better, you know, we would have a full-time fire station, we would have, you know, we'd get sidewalks and we, you know, they're in the Western part of the county, there'd be all this stuff. And, it, which some of it's happened, some of it hasn't. Um, I do know, you know, we've closed a fire station um, in the inner city, which is is crazy to me with um, the more people that continue to, to, to live in our county. And then and just other little things that, um, you know, the city's no longer um, mowing um, right of ways and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I don't I don't know that the consolidation was as great. I, I'm sure there was there's quite a few good things that came out of it, but it's not everything's perfect. Mary girl, your response. Yeah. Um, I really like what all the candidates who spoke before me on this question have already said. They brought up a lot of important points about yay or nay on whether to do that. Um, I think an audit would be great. Um, one thing that I would like to see changed or, I don't know if this would fall under the purview of an audit, but the high salaries that we see in the upper management of BPU. I mean, we have a manager of BPU who got a 20% raise during the lockdowns last year, now making over $300,000 a year. To me, that's ridiculous. And we have people losing their service over $1, um, I assume, just to pay that guy. Um, so I think an audit is definitely important. As far as consolidation, I can definitely see the point um, of having things put together to save money, consolidating departments like HR, IT, and various other things. But like, um, like was pointed out previously, um, the things that were promised with the UG consolidation didn't happen. And so to me, to consolidate these things, and as David Haley pointed out about the slush fund, since the UG already kind of uses BPU to the extent that we're already kind of, the BPU is connected with the UG, you know, the UG is using the BPU as their own private piggy bank. Consolidating further to me is the fox watching the chicken house. So I think the, to me, the ultimate ideal solution would be to not have a public utility, bid out contracts for utility to private utilities. Um, I don't know how long that would take but that would be the ultimate solution to me. So my answer is yes, I think an audit is important and I would say no to consolidation. <clears throat> Our next question will come from Elnora Jefferson. Elnora. Okay, thank you very much, Merle. In preparing for today's forum, I asked uh, people a uh, different walks of life uh, what questions they had and so a question that came from a small business owner was, that, was this. He said that residential customers receive a discount for an all-electric home, yet small businesses do not, or businesses do not. Is that true or untrue? And then the other part of that question is, should they receive a discount? And if they should, is this something that the BPU board is able to change? Finally, will you pledge to lead the change? And I'll be happy to repeat that question if I need to. It's going to be involved. Please start, do. We'll start with Mary Girl. Mary? 
Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, and Elnor, I may need to have you repeat part of that. So you were asking, the first part of the question was um, that that the, the, the person who asked the question, their, their uh, understanding is that residents can get a credit for on their electric, I assume for solar, maybe that's what they mean, and businesses don't. No, for all electric, it doesn't have to be solar, just for all electric appliances and that type of thing, for all electric utilities in their home. Okay, okay. Uh, well, let me, let me answer that part. Um, I am not personally aware of that. I don't know if that's, if that's true or not. Um, now to me, I suppose I can see the point of them doing that. Um, if, if, if your home is all electric, then you're gonna be getting all of your service since you're not using gas, every, all of your power needs are gonna be delivered by BPU. And of course they would want that to, um, to raise their profits and revenues. Um, I don't know um, about the businesses. I would say I don't, I don't like when there's separate policies for things. I don't like one group getting an advantage and another not. So if there's going to be some advantage given, I think it needs to be given across the board, just like with tax abatements given through the UG to big corporations that build developments. I think all homeowners, all business owners, regardless of their size, should get the same advantage. And if that means less revenue, then so be it. Um, so that's how I would answer that part. What was the second part of your question? Yeah. Whether or not is this, if if it is true, it is, and the change is warranted. Is this something that the board is able to change? And if it is, would you pledge to lead or at least support the change? I see. Um, yeah. Again, I am not aware of whether it's possible or not currently through the board. But again, I would say, um, you know, I'm a big fan of what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So um, any advantage it's given to a homeowner, I'd like to see the same given to small businesses and vice versa so that we're not having um, any kind of public entity choosing winners and losers in our community. Thank you. Ryan Edson, your response to this. Um, yes, so I, I guess the, I don't know for sure if the, if I know electric homes I, I, I don't know if they get a discount or not, but I do know, and I think they, I think they do, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. And I'm not sure if businesses can get that or not. Uh, something definitely we could look into, but I, I do know when you're using an all electric home, um, it, it obviously is more money for the VPU because they're not using gas. Uh, it's also a lot more expensive to run an all electric home versus um, using gas, um, especially right now. Um, I, as far as the, yes, the board would be the one that would make the, the final change in that. Um, and I would have to look into it and understand more uh, about if that is the case and why, and to understand, to, to make a decision. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have the information in front of me to make a decision. So. Thank you. Dennis Grendel, your remark. Oh, I know they they used to give you a better rate if you were all electric. I don't know if they still do or not, but uh, in a way, it's it's. I think everybody should get a, a break, not just one set. You know, uh, but businesses need breaks too. Uh, small businesses you know uh we got to help them all we can because they're the backbone of this country small business and what was the other part of the question i'm sorry i forgot no that's okay and uh, well should you answer that so is this something that the board bpu board is able to change if if there is a discrepancy if does the board have the power to to make those rates uniform between those two uh populations and then if so, would you pledge to lead or at least support the change? Uh, I believe the board is able to do that. Uh, and yes, I would support a, a change. Um, we need to help people out the, all we can, you know. Uh, think times are tough right now. And we gotta give people whatever advantage they can get to help them get back on their feet. Thank you. Okay. Senator Haley, your response. 
Well, certainly let me say that first, I'm grateful. Uh, thank you for the question, Elnora. And uh, I I'm grateful that I get a chance to be the last one to try and answer it. I just got such a delight in watching Mary Girl and Ryan Edson uh, try and work through that because had it not been for them, I wouldn't be encouraged to say, yeah, I appreciate how we tried to work through that. I uh, thank you, Mary and Ryan and, uh, and Dennis for helping David Haley to say, ditto. We don't know if there's a balance uh, yet and how that balance is struck between our small businesses and our uh, residential rate payers and how that would be uh, applied for 100% electric use and how that should be implemented. And if the board has the authority to do that, um, I too don't have a definitive answer to the question and I'm taking courage by the other three and their responses as to how they brought that through too. Okay. Okay, now we'll go to J.D. Rios who has the next question. J.D. Uh, my question is, uh, how or what role do you believe the BPU has in economic development for our city and county? Okay, we'll start with Senator Haley. Senator? So I want to, this is where I think um, I'm probably more with the current BPU than um, the change that I hope to see brought. Uh, I've been uh, privileged to see many of the good works, uh, JD, that um, the, the, the supplemental benefit of being our own utility, the various contributions to uh, community causes and what have you, that our utility, which is why I still call our utility a jewel, um, that in the enhancement it plays in economic development. I will say there's a great room for improvement. So I, I, I want to commend the BPU for picking and supporting those fledgling and longtime entities uh, those, uh, and organizations that they do support. I am concerned um, about some of the new policies. For example, recently the BPU um, has uh, the board has agreed to give away uh, new hookups for those developments east of 635. Certainly some could argue that that would assist as the land that's being taken by the UG goes into the land bank from people that live in east of 635 as the UG continues to rapidly um, accelerate its taking of the private property that's held, which it has done in a breakneck pace, but that's a discussion for another time. Now that a developer might come in and acquire that land for a dollar that was previously held uh, and that the uh, BPU through economic development would waive the connection charges to those developers for new water and sewer hookups is abominable. And that the utility would do that when I have average citizens, ratepayers who've told me that moving from a longtime residence, but then moving into a senior citizen residency would require a, 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 an earnest down payment, even though they've been a longtime ratepayer, these kind of policies are out of whack, but that goes beyond the, the four corners of your question. We do play a good role in economic development when it comes to uh, certain organizations. We shouldn't give developers tax breaks uh, in a certain area for hookups, even though we do want to spur economic development and we need to bring a balance to that. Den Dennis Grendel, your remark. Okay, well, I, I agree with uh, Senator Haley. Uh, we don't need to be giving away all this stuff. Uh, we mostly would give it away to the big people, the big corporations and stuff. We need to help out the small little mom and pop stores and, and, and businesses. We need to do whatever we can to help them. And, and uh, no, I don't, I, I'm tired of giving away stuff to, to people like that uh, with, you know, they come in with, oh, we're going to develop this, we're going to do this. And next thing you know, you know, it, it no, uh, I'm against uh, 
giving that away. Uh, but I, I am for trying to help the small businesses get them started with uh, the, the, these small businesses are the backbone of, of this country. Uh, if we didn't have them, I don't know what would happen. That's all I can say, and thank you. Okay. Ryan Edson, your remark. Um, yeah, just um, I, I think um, we have a pretty good um, economic development um, program in place at the BPU. Uh, we meet uh, quarterly, uh, the Economic Development Board does, um, along with, with several, several other folks from the you know, unified government or just whoever's, whoever's presenting to us. Um, you know, we just had a meeting last week uh, talking about the downtown Kansas City, Kansas Community College campus and, and would be very great for our community um, uh, in that Northeast part of our territory would, would be uh, outstanding. I'm, I'm, I, I, I fully support the program. I think it's a great, great, uh, great idea. Um, on the, just to kind of uh, bring up what Senator Haley had said about the, the uh, connection fees east of 635, you know, that was on the books. That's, I think that got voted in in maybe 2007 uh, through board minutes. They didn't even have an actual vote on it. Um, that was all brought back up uh, just to clean up language and, and make that correct a few weeks ago. Um, also, another one that was an economic development deal that was um, a different one that but it brought it all the way out to 78th street. I was completely against it. Um, I think in the inner city to, to help spur some economic development and, and all the f stranded infrastructure that we have um, in those land bank lots that makes sense for the BPU um, with all the houses down there that are, are just, they're empty lots. So um, I did support that one because um, we already have everything there connections ready. It's, it's, it's very, it's more or less switch flipping a switch to get those things back up and running and bringing money into the BPU instead of letting, letting it set there empty. Mary girl, your response. Um, yeah, I think I have kind of a somewhat similar, but also different response to, um, some of the other candidates. Um, like Senator Haley mentioned about the special favors given with hookups. I'm not in favor of that. Um, Personally, I don't feel that a public utility has much role in city development or city planning. I, I, and what I mean by that is to the extent that I have heard from others and that I've done my own research that um, special kickbacks have been given either for hookups or for payment um, you know, for X number of years for different TIF projects and things that have gone on. Um, that's not fair. That should not be happening. Um, also, with regard to the land bank, like uh, Senator Haley said, that's a different story for another day. Um, let me just say, I'm not in favor of the UG taking people's property through piracy, um, which is the non-payment of, of property taxes, which I say is, is piracy, and then giving that land out as special favors to people. You can take this for what you want, but to me, that's that's what that's what a mafia does, and I'm not afraid to say that. But that is what a mafia does, and I don't think that is becoming of a public utility. And so, I would not like to see the BPU going into vacant areas that are vacant because they were stolen from people, and then building hookups at, in a "if you build it, they will come" mentality because that is a waste of our money. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see. Um, our land or our money given away as special favors to corporate entities. And that's about what I have to say about that. Okay, thank you. Now we will move to closing remarks. Candidates will have one minute and we will start with Mary Girl. Mary, you have one minute. Okay, um, yeah, from my closing remarks, I just like to say that I think that I will bring a unique fresh perspective as a newcomer to the board. Um, I have not, you know, served on any board for decades on end, which I don't think is um, helpful in bringing those fresh perspectives. 
Um, I'm, I care very deeply about the, the real rights of people, at not just, um, just what they want in the moment, but the root of the problem that's causing their displeasure. Um, so I want to give people the opportunity to make choices in their utilities. Um, I want them to be able to have a choice in services. I want them to not have code enforcement come and, um, you know, get rid of their wells or keep them, you know, from buying solar from whomever they choose. Um, I will work hard to, to the extent that I can on the board um, to address the issues with the pilot, especially getting it removed from our bills. If we can't get it um, completely ended, perhaps we could at least get it taken off of our BPU bill so that people aren't being forced to pay what is the equivalent of a tax through coercion and extortion. Um, and again, I'll mention again that I would post every vote online or through some other means that I can communicate effectively with my constituency, every vote that I do on the board so that I can be held accountable. Thank you. Okay. Next, we'll go to Ryan Edson. Ryan. Thank you, Merle. Um, so in closing, I, I, I mean, the, the BPU bill continues to come up um, a lot. I think one thing that um, people need to realize that, you know, at 35 to 45, 35 to 40 percent of your bill, at least, is charges to the UG or charges from the UG. Um, you know, the pilot is set by the UG. Uh, the board has nothing to do with the pilot. Um, you know, that, that rate is set by the UG. We, I mean, we, we're, we're simply a collection agency for the uni unified government is all we are on that stuff. Um, you know, one thing as far as um, I, you know, in my hopes of reelection is I will continue to demand accountability and transparency from transparency from the BPU leaders. I have, I've brought real world business solutions of, um, to the operation of the whole utility. Um, we've helped, you know, I've helped, uh, set and create key performance indicators for the whole operations of the utility. Um, st I've steered the utility into data-based decision-making, um, which has not always been done. Um, I've, I've been accessible to all of my customers, our, our customers. Um, trying to think what else. I... I, I've had a big focus on a culture of safety for all of our workers at the utility. Um, that there's some lack of that there, and um, ultimately, my goal is to um, ensure that the utility is positioned to adapt in the near future or in the future. Thank you, Dennis Grendel. Your closing remarks. Uh, Senator Haley, I do live east of 635 in Turner, so let you know that. Anyway, I will do my very best to to do, to uh, get the rates down any way we can. Uh, and like like uh, Mr. Edson said, that uh, a lot of that bill we're collecting for the city because the city owns the BPU. In fact, I, I and I, and. I would never, ever, ever, ever sell the BPU. It's our greatest asset in, in KCK here. And uh, the BPU was created for two reasons. Reasonable rates for the people it serves and jobs for the people it serves. And I think they've kind of fallen down on that in, in the last few years. And I, I'd like to do something I can to rectify that. And uh, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Senator Haley, your And I too, part. Merle, would like to thank you and Nora, JD, and Mary for taking the time. And those who are tuning in, really, to, to watch this. We don't have enough of these forums anymore. We uh, hardly get a chance to be caught up on these issues. I thank you. I know I'm thanking you on behalf of um, all the other candidates that you would work to continue to make this accessible. I genuinely mean that. So I love Wyandotte County. I was born here. And I think about why um, I may not retire here. And I look at and listen very closely to what are the problems with Wyandotte County? And one of the problems with Wyandotte County is our jewel. Our jewel is we own our own utility, but our utility does not have a board that is responsive to the majority of the concerns of the ratepayers. That's it. 
period. And um, we continue to send new people down of the volatility of our Wyandotte County electorate time and time again has heard candidates pledge to do something about the BPU. That's what they all run on. And they get there and drink the Kool-Aid on that board and become a part of the problem. That's the problem. Because those of us who love our native county or whether you've moved here, don't wanna stay here and small businesses won't remain here because right across the line from kcp &L, to Evergy, to everywhere else, we here at the BPU disproportionately pay for a basic service that everybody needs in a civilized society, electric and water use. The truth is the pass through of our UG charges needs to be addressed. In the legislature, I've tried to cap that at 15% as it is for everyone else who's with a for-profit utility as managed by the KCC. In closing, what got me on here were policies, not that the UG creates on our, our board, but the policies that this board perpetuates that ignore everyday people. The kind of policies that let those out West uh, have large corporations that go for months, years without paying their bill, like the T-bones, if you'll recall. But meanwhile, a small business east of 635 that goes without a month or two, if they've been in business 10 or 15, 20 years, will be shut off. A resident will be shut off, but the T-bone stay for years. And that's $700,000 left when they left. And we will shut people off. You will shut people off, BPU, for a few dollars, despite how long they've been here. That to me says to the volatility of our electorate. We need to have a responsible person, responsible people who will put the public back in the board of public utilities because we're not at the table now. All these people out West, the majority of uh, those that are in, in there, I'm not against, I've got many people in Piper who are supporting David Haley because they believe in balance and equity. And the fact that four of them are out there right now of the six members, does not concern them because we all love Wyandotte County and we need that balance struck time in and time out with these inequities that continue, continue to inflict us on our jewel, our utility. And I hope everyone that's listening will come out and support and vote for that ongoing change and put a responsible member to all of the public sitting there at the table. Thank you, Senator. Thank you all who participated in the forum. The program has been taped and will be replayed on the community college's public access channels and YouTube. This session of the forum is adjourned. Thank you.